It's a new page. Your book won't automatically open to it. We don't need it once here. So <laughs> like a Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know what they're called, right? Those are called the dirty pages. Because, of, because they get muffled because that's what I was opening the book to. Affectionately called the dirty pages. So what page are you on? 264. That's the one right after 263 and right before 265. From, all right. Pretty good. For a guy who was who didn't do well in math, um, I got my numbers. Thank you, teacher. Ready? So this is the said service. Ash Wednesday is a said service, which means there's no music. It is um, the beginning of the penitential season of Lent. It is. Um, uh, in some ways a somber day, but in some ways um, a joy-filled day in that it's another opportunity. Another opportunity for us to dig deeper into our commitment to Christ. Another opportunity to walk with Him and become more like Him. Um, I'm a big either um, blessing or burden kind of guy, and there's so much blessing in Lent. Um, Although when you look at it at the face, like many things in life, it looks dark and ominous and about um, pulling us down. Actually, it is getting, the point of it is to get rid of dead weight in order to rise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Who is willing to read Mark? Mark your books, 103, verses 8 through 14. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, in return, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. 
Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among all the peoples, Where is their God? Um, our psalm is on page 733, and we will do verses 8 through 14. I'll read the first part, and you'll come in at the star. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor reward us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great on those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. As the Father cares for his children, for he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are with us. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We betreat you on, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and not yet killed, as sour, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And look down our minds, our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others 
in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you go as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for the love for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners so that they may be seen by others. I truly tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to the Father who is in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who sees in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I love this day. Um, and it's an odd day to love because it kind of goes against everything the current culture kind of stands for, doesn't it? But the church is counter cultural. And the more we go into the current, the way we live our lives, the more technology becomes completely consuming, the more the church stands in, not in opposition to it, but as an alternative. Um, and that's what I think countercultural means. Not that it opposes, but it walks along with. And as there's less of us doing this, doesn't it make it all that much more important that we do? You know, because the scripture, that last line of the gospel, is one of my central theologies. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Is that true? It's a hundred percent true. Does that mean you shouldn't have stuff? It does not mean that. It doesn't mean you can't be wealthy. It doesn't mean you can't have stuff. It doesn't mean we're all supposed to sit out in the front and, and burn down our stuff. That's not what it means. It means that we need times like this to purify and simplify and take inventory. We have to make sure that there's enough room, like the Christmas carol from... Um, the Christian band says, make room in your heart. Is there enough room for the Holy Spirit to dwell? Because stuff does crowd your soul. Do you think that's true? So when I was in the Dominican Republic, I saw some of the poorest people in the world. And they were all happy. On Mother's Day, the kids would pick up mangoes that grew wild on the trees and give them to their mothers as gifts, who felt like the richest people in the world for having mangoes given to them by their children. We often would bring young men back to the United States to go to seminary who wanted to be priests. And inevitably, they would be given American-style lives. 
watches and clothes and, you know, a closet full of clothes. Who here doesn't have at least one closet full of clothes? Because I can tell you that I have several. Um, and I don't consider myself rich. But that one thing about the Dominican Republic was the faith. Their faith was just so incredibly strong. And when they came here and they got a bunch of stuff, guess what happened to their faith? It diminished. It was not what it was because it is in constant competition with other things. When there's nothing else to take from you and all you have is God, it's pretty crystal clear. And when other things compete with it, it gets cloudy fast. And so I think that the work of Lent and the work of Christians is not to abandon. I mean, some people are called to asceticism and to be Cistercians and to live in a little cell with a flat board and pray 12 hours a day. That ain't me. My first spiritual director said I'm supposed to sit in front of the Eucharist for an hour a day. I thought I was going to lose. I tried. I tried so hard. Can you see me sitting anywhere for an hour? Doing anything? I mean, maybe at 60 I could get close, but at 24, there wasn't a snowball's chance that I could pull that off. I was much closer to God when I went on a 12-mile run than when I tried to sit in front of the Eucharist. But, so I, but I'm constantly, and some people are called to that quiet lifestyle. Some people are called to be prayer warriors. But each of us has uniqueness and gifts and God uses that in powerful ways. But if you never have time to talk to God because you are so busy, and I am as guilty of this as anybody else. I was driving today and I thought, you know what, God? I haven't said hello to you in a couple of days. That's not good. That's not good. I get so busy doing the work that I forget what the work really is. And I think that is the beauty of Lent. That not that we're supposed to just purge everything. But God, how much room do you think God needs? Not much. I, don't, I mean, you, give, you clear a sliver, you don't think God can use that in abundance? Of course God can. So this isn't about us getting it right. This is about us slowing down just a little. I know I'm... Uh, this is me talking, right? Slow down just a little. In order for the Holy Spirit to dwell. And that's what I heard in the psalm. That's what I heard in that colic that we, the prayer for purity that we say every Sunday. You know our hearts. You know our conscience. You know us better than we know ourselves. Dwell in us. And I, just like Advent, will lead to a more fulfilling Christmas, Lent will lead to a more fulfilling Easter. Because you cannot experience joy unless there's room for joy to dwell. And Christmas joy and Easter joy come with work. Because God never promised there wasn't going to be work. But we get this part wrong, and I, and I, I entreat you, with this. It's not about how well we do it. Because the re be being godly and living a godly life is response to understanding that you are already loved. You are already forgiven. You are already claimed. You are already perfect. And the response to that is to do acts of charity and live like you understand that. It's not about whether you prayed enough or whether you fed enough people or whether you sacrificed enough or whether you suffered enough. That's not our God. But if you truly believe in this God who died for us, if you truly believe that God loves you more than you can possibly fathom, I think there is only one response to that. And that's to try to live like as an outward sign of inward grace. Do you know where we say that? Baptism. Because that's the definition 
Because that is an outward sign of inward grace. God gives us Eucharist. God gives us grace. God gives us each other. I depend on you for your prayers, for your understanding, for your acceptance, for your pats on the back and your hugs, for your picking me up when I'm flat on my face and exhausted and feeling like no one can love me. You know where the love of Christ comes from? From you. From Linda Zamza, who meets me at the sacristy and says, I understand. <laughs> Let's take it in there so you don't make a mess out here. <laughs> I mean, that ashes. <laughs> I was going to I was gonna spill it right here, and she knew it. <laughs> and, and very lovingly and gently said, I've got a better idea. <laughs> but that is what the body of Christ does. Right? Countlessly and endlessly. And that is what we are invited into in this next prayer that says, the church invites you. To, I'm tingling because the Holy Spirit's kicking through me right now. The church invites you into a holy Lent. It's not about perfection. It's about love. It's about translucence, transfiguration. It's about being pure reflection of that joy and that love and that peace and that forgiveness that we allow ourselves to feel and then bring it out into the world that so desperately needs it. And I got to experience that all afternoon as I brought ashes to people who couldn't be here with us today and who walked, I walked through the door or I went to the school or I went to where they were because they couldn't come to us you do that in so many millions of ways without anybody else knowing it, which is what the scripture said, right? Don't put on the oil and stand on the corner blowing the bugle because God who sees in secret knows your heart. So that is what this day is about for me. The journey to become a little more translucent become a little more emptied so that God can fill me up and use me. I had the best afternoon of my life because I am never happier than when I'm doing this. I, it's all I've ever wanted to do my whole life. How blessed am I? I have often called myself the richest man I know. I believe that with every flavor of my being that extravagant love of my God that allows me to do this, how cool is God? I want that for every other person on this planet. I want them to have that even for a day. And I'd love them to have it for a lifetime. Because that is what God is about in my heart. That there is no, it's not more complicated and it's not simpler. It is pure unadulterated love, grace, and extravagance. It's poured on us. There's only one us. That's to accept it. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Eleven minutes, Mark. <laughs> So we are on page 264 on the bottom. I love this prayer. There's two parts of the service I absolutely love. The, the litany, which is as, it's very, it's very um, detailed. And I love that kind of inventory of thinking through with you where we've been in the last year. Where have we got it right? Where can we do it better? I love that. But I love this prayer the most. This is probably the, my second favorite prayer to the one that we do in the committal service. That's from the second century. Because this is from, this is almost that old. We've been saying this prayer for thousands of years. To your people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection 
it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of their notorious sin and had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of Holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by the reading and meditation of God's Holy Word, and to make the right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer, Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our mortality and penance. And when we remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you to come forward if you wish for the imposition of ashes.
when it says you shouldn't make outward signs and yet we do ashes, isn't that kind of counterintuitive? <laughs> but this is a day to make a cross on your forehead so that the other 364 days you remember that that cross is on your forehead. So one of the things that the, the people who, um, the motivational speakers say is, when you're thinking about doing something, think about whether that act would be well fitted on the front of the New York Times. And then if it would be, do it, and if it isn't, don't. I think this cross for me is that. If you can't do it with a cross on your forehead, then maybe you shouldn't do it. And if a cross on your forehead would inspire others to do like you, I think that's a good litmus test. And so that's one of the reasons we do this the way we do it. Christians have done this for, again, thousands of years. That there is now sand in the baptistry and in the fonts. I invite you to make the sign of the cross by putting your hand into the dirt and letting that grind get under your fingernails and cross yourself with it so that of the eight weeks of Lent, you get that nasty, gritty feeling. And so when we put the Easter water in, we dip your hands in, it's life-giving. And it feels refreshing and new after you've had eight weeks of walking through the desert. Join us in Easter Church. when you speak. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Make me hear the joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. Cleanse me in a clean heart, O God. Or create. Cast me not away from your presence. Give me the joy of your saving help again. I shall teach your ways to the wicked. Deliver me from death, O God. Open my lips, O Lord. And you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. Sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. The litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole community of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault. In thought, word, and deed, that what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to the call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true in the midst of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess 
all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of, of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those who are more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to command the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, for our prejudice and contempt, towards those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from the wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his minister to declare pronounced to his people being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent with the sincere hearts of his holy gospel. Therefore, I beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our lives hereafter be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise if you're able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share with one another this night the sign of peace.
mingling this water and wine, that we share in the divinity of Christ, who holds himself to share in our humanity. Our prayer, page 361 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and grace. It is right and good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and of earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with angels and archangels, with St. Francis, St. Benedict, St. Mark, St. Anne, Blessed Virgin Mary, and the whole company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of our name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. For Lent we'll be using Eucharistic Prayer B. It can be found on page... Three sixty seven. So we'll be on three sixty eight. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, and the word spoken to the prophets, and above all the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Después de la cena, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to the command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord, presenting to you from your creation this bread and wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sacrificed, be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Mark and all your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and author of all of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the words our Savior taught us, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Grace, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. My brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
peace of God which passes all of our understanding be in your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of the Son, Jesus Christ. May God's blessing be yours this night and always. By the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Life's short and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week. We'll see you for the first Sunday of Lent on Sunday, online or in person. Um, starting next Wednesday at 5, we'll have soup and bread and then a discussion um, on the next Sunday's Gospel. Um, followed by Stations of the Cross at 6.30, which will be online, not wood. Um, and then um, a brief Eucharist to follow. May you have a blessed and holy Lent. Thanks for joining us tonight. Father, I'd like to make an announcement. Two things. First, it's fabulous to be here. Secondly, as many of you are aware, my grandson was seriously injured in a boating accident on behalf of the fire department. And Father was a major influence into his successful healing. Um, he called me this morning from the hospital and told me that the four members of the department that are down there attending him commented on your influence in all of that. So thank you nice. very much. Thank you. I'm so glad Anthony's okay and the other fire part is okay. Um, and we'll keep praying for them. Are we clear?